God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. I am worn out with crying, with longing for my God. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen to my neck. I have sunk into the mud of the deep, and there is no foothold. I have entered the waters of the deep, and the waves overwhelm me. I am wearied with all my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes are wasted away from looking for my God. More numerous than the hairs on my head are those who hate me without cause. Those who attack me with lies are too much for my strength. How can I restore what I have never stolen? O oh God, you know my sinful folly. My sins you can see. Let those who hope in you not be put to shame through me, Lord of hosts. Let not those who seek you be dismayed through me, God of Israel. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. When I afflict my soul with fasting, they make it a taunt against me. When I put on sackcloth in mourning, then they make me a byword, the gossip of men at the gates, the subject of drunkard songs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am worn out with crying, with, with longing for my God. I needed food, and they gave me gall. I was parched with thirst, and they gave me vinegar. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favor. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Rescue me from sinking in the mud. Save me from my foes. Save me from the waters of the deep, lest the waves overwhelm me. Do not let the deep engulf me, nor death close its mouth on me. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer quickly, for I am in distress. Come close to my soul and redeem me. Ransom me, pressed by my foes. You know how they taunt and deride me. My oppressors are all before you. Taunts have broken my heart. I have reached the end of my strength. I looked in vain for compassion, for consolers, not one could I find. For food they gave me poison, in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I needed food, and they gave me gall. I was parched with thirst, and they gave me vinegar. Seek the Lord, and you will live. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your help, O God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving, a gift pleasing God more than oxen, more than beasts prepared for sacrifice. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, 
and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. For God will bring help to Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah, and men shall dwell there in possession. The sons of his servants shall inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell there. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Seek the Lord, and And you you will will live. The Lord will teach us his ways, and we will follow in his footsteps. From the second book of Chronicles, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and with them some Meunites came to fight against Jehoshaphat. The message was brought to Jehoshaphat. A great multitude is coming against you from across the sea, from Edom. They are already in Hazazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was frightened, and he hastened to consult the Lord. He proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Then Judah gathered to seek help from the Lord. From every one of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court, and he said, Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand is power and might, and no one can withstand you. Was it not you, our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have dwelt in it, and they built in it a sanctuary to your honor, saying, When evil comes upon us, the sword of judgment, or pestilence, or famine. We will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and we will cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. All Judah was standing before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their young sons. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the clan of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says to you, Do not fear or lose heart at the sight of this vast multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Go down against them tomorrow. You will see them coming up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will come upon them at the end of the wadi which opens on the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not have to fight in this encounter. Take your places, stand firm, and see how the Lord will be with you to deliver you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or lose heart. Tomorrow go out to meet them, and the Lord will be with you. Then Jehoshaphat knelt down with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord in worship. Levites from among the Kohathites and Korahites rose to sing the praises of the Lord, the God of Israel, in a resounding chorus. 
In the early morning they hastened out to the wilderness of Tekoa. As they were going out, Jehoshaphat halted and said, Listen to me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Trust in the Lord your God, and you will be found firm. Trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting with the people, he appointed some to sing to the Lord, and some to praise the holy appearance as it went forth at the head of the army. They sang, Give thanks to the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. At the moment they began their jubilant hymn, the Lord laid an ambush against the Ammonites, Moabites, and those of Mount Seir who were coming against Judah, so that they were vanquished. For the Ammonites and Moabites set upon the inhabitants of Mount Seir and completely exterminated them. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they began to destroy each other. When Judah came to the watchtower of the desert and looked toward the throng, they saw only corpses fallen on the ground with no survivors. From the Second Book of Kings When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Stay here, please, Elijah said to Elisha. The Lord has sent me on to Bethel. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, Elisha replied, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, where the guild prophets went out to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord will take your master from over you today? Yes, I know it, he replied. Keep still. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, Elisha, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, Elisha replied, I will not leave you. They went on to Jericho, where the guilt prophets approached Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord will take your master from over you today? Yes, I know it, he replied. Keep still. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, Elisha replied, I will not leave you. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, and when the two stopped at the Jordan, stood facing them at a distance. Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit. You have asked something that is not easy, he replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted. Otherwise, not. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. 
Then he picked up Elijah's mantle, which had fallen from him, and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle which had fallen from Elijah, he struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided, and he crossed over. The guild prophets in Jericho, who were on the other side, saw him and said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They went to meet him, bowing to the ground before him. Our struggle is not against human enemies, but against the principalities and powers, against the evil spirits. Stand firm, and let the truth be the belt around your waist. Stand firm, and you will see the Lord coming to deliver you. Stand firm, and let the truth be the belt around your waist. From the Treatise on the Mysteries by St. Ambrose, Bishop. Fresh from the waters and resplendent in these garments, God's holy people hasten to the altar of Christ, saying, I will go into the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my youth. They have sloughed off the old skin of error, their youth renewed like an eagle's, and they make haste to approach the heavenly banquet. They come and, seeing the sacred altar prepared, cry out, You have prepared a table in my sight. David puts these words into their mouths, The Lord is my shepherd, and nothing will be lacking to me. He has set me down there in a place of pasture. He has brought me beside refreshing water. Further on we read, for though I should walk in the midst of the shadow of death, I shall not be afraid of evils, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff have given me comfort. You have prepared in my sight a table against those who afflict me. You have made my head rich in oil, and your cup, which exhilarates. How excellent it is! It is wonderful that God rained manna on our fathers, and they were fed with daily food from heaven. And so it is written, Man ate the bread of angels. Yet those who ate that bread all died in the desert. But the food that you receive, that living bread which came down from heaven, supplies the very substance of eternal life, and whoever will eat it will never die for it is the body of Christ. Consider now, which is the more excellent, the bread of angels or the flesh of Christ, which is indeed the body that gives life? The first was manna from heaven, the second is above the heavens. One was of heaven, the other is of the Lord of the heavens. One subject to corruption if it was kept till the morrow, the other free from all corruption, for if anyone tastes of it with reverence, he will be incapable of corruption. For our fathers, water flowed from the rock. For you, blood flows from Christ. Water satisfied their thirst for a time. Blood cleanses you forever. The Jew drinks and still thirsts, but when you drink, you will be incapable of thirst. What happened in symbol is now fulfilled in reality. If what you marvel at is a shadow, how great is the reality whose very shadow you marvel at? Listen to this, which shows that what happened in the time of our fathers was but a shadow. They drank, it is written, from the rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. All this took place as a symbol for us. You know now what is more excellent. Light is preferable to its shadow, reality to its symbol, the body of the giver to the manna he gave from heaven. Our fathers passed through the sea 
And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Everything that happened to them was symbolic. All ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink. Everything that happened to them was symbolic. Let us pray. God our Father, your light of truth guides us to the way of Christ. May all who follow him reject what is contrary to the gospel. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.